Anytime, anywhere, right now. Oh yeah. Uh huh. What's up? Welcome to this new episode of Fact Heist. Today we will try to understand why some people can experience ubersexuality, hypersexuality, aka compulsive sexual behavior or sex addiction. For clickbait, is a sudden and frequent increase in sex drive and an intense and durable preoccupation with sexual fantasies, formerly known as nymphomania for women. I haven't been fucked like that since grade school. And satyriasis for men. It's the result of a low threshold for sexual responsiveness. It is unclear if hypersexuality is only a symptom of another condition, or if it's a disorder of its own. The DSM-5 and its crew of Scientos Locos don't describe it as a primary condition but rather a symptom, so I guess we have to believe them. As any addiction, this uncontrollable urge can have negative impact on job and career, health, self-esteem, relationships, social life and so on. Those disruptive, compulsive and harmful behaviors can take many forms. Frequent masturbation sessions, cybersex, use of pornography, oh yeah, repetitive thoughts about sex fantasies. We all know what's going on here. It's just implied, but we all know what's going on in this thought bubble. The kids don't know, but we do. Paid sex, I mean like prostitutes and escorts, or intercourses with many or multiple partners. Some indications must be considered as warnings for an underlying struggle with this compulsive sexual behavior. Things like intense, overwhelming, Recurrent and time-consuming sex fantasies. Japanese girls puke in each other's mouths. Hello Kitty, kawaii desh? Unsuccessful control over these urges and behaviors. <laughs> Trouble establishing or maintaining a healthy relationship. What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck are you doing, huh? Watching porn during breakfast. Feeling like driven, possessed. To fulfill sexual patterns often with obsessive compulsive rituals, but with a taste of guilt and remorse afterward, those compulsive sexual behavior can also be a coping system or an escape from other problems, like everyday life issues, anxiety, stress, loneliness, or even depression. I don't have any friends, only sex people from the phone. Hypersexuality can also be a risky business because of more direct serious consequences that can far outweigh the gratification. Troubles at work. We got your computer back. I mean, it is, it is dirty i'm talking like hoes sluts anal double anal penetration interracial facial man cream pie i don't even know what that is financial strains loss of relationships you are so full of shit second of all you are full of shit getting arrested for sexual offenses or illegal sexual activities with inappropriate partners but mainly getting or giving stds like the cooties or worse oh, i got aids again the most prominent predictor of hypersexuality is psychological abuse especially by the father during childhood or adolescence the quality of early attachments strongly affects the capacity for adult intimacy I'll forever traumatized your own flesh and blood. so early traumas can have lifelong after effects on arousal desire and pair bonding it'll change your daughter from a beautiful child into an empty shell because sexual desire is a complex multifactorial developmental system nice work daddy and the accumulation of abuse types is associated with an increase in traits of hypersexuality to this day i can't have sex with a woman against her will without thinking about rape every early environmental factor can have modulatory contingent effect and in almost every species studies have shown that early experience is not about learning how to be sexual but is about learning the appropriate social context to do so she's my sister as many addictive disorders there can be a duality involving both over control and out of control behavior or thoughts rule breaking sensation seeking and high impulsivity may accompany hypersexuality in those compulsions there's a tolerance effect with an increasing level of intensity needed to reach the same high or hit which seems to match the definition of addiction Several neurological conditions can cause those behaviors. Actually, hypersexuality can be a symptom of many disorders. Those sexually inappropriate acts can happen in around 8% of Alzheimer disease patients. Hypersexuality is also a common known symptom of borderline personality disorder. People with bipolar disorder, because of the mood swings, can display increased sex drives, according to the DSM-5. Due to its relation with dopamine, Hypersexuality can also be a side effect of some medication for Parkinson's disease. Methamphetamine, la creme de la creme of street drugs, can also trigger hypersexual behaviors. People with high-functioning autism spectrum disorder, are more at risk to develop non-normative, hypersexual and paraphiliac behaviors.
that those compulsive sexual behaviors can be the result of a dysregulation or damages in the central nervous system. Certain neurotransmitters like serotonin, norepinephrine, or dopamine can help regulate mood, but, at a higher level, can sometimes lead to hypersexual compulsions. Busey syndrome, a condition resulting in bilateral lesions of the temporal lobe, can also drive to compulsive needs for sexy time. Due to neural plasticity, this repetitive, obsessive compulsive behavior, can over time rewire neural pathways, just like any other addictions. The increasing, more intensive sexual stimulation will change neural circuitry of reinforcement and reward centers. For more about that, check our episode about dopamine. Link up there. Tumors or injury to the prefrontal cortex can play a role too, as this part of the brain is essential for impulse control. Subtle dysregulation of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, yes that's a thing, with increased levels of something called luteinizing hormone may be present in hypersexual men. But against all odds, there's no difference in testosterone levels. There are several treatments and solutions for hypersexuality, but go figure this shit out by yourself, I'm not a physician, I'm more of a stoner. So what did you expect? And that's it for this episode of Fact Heist. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. <laughs>